My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have ordered us to take our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a role model. As a role model. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not only a role model in the way he performed the prayer or hajj. But he was a role model in all aspects of his life. And he should be our own role model as well in all aspects of our life. Especially our manners, our characteristics. It should be something we try our best to copy the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Prophet sallallahu was raised to be the best of character sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ You are a mercy to mankind. You are a, a, a person who possessed the best of all manners, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It is so important, especially in these days, especially in these days, to go back and to search and to look at the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to seek from it lessons and power, to empower us today in a time where there's so much confusion, where there's so many, uh, 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 with so much differences, that where you, in, in darkness, without where you need the light the most, and the guidance the most. And today, I would like to speak about one aspect of the Prophet sallallahu manners, or the Prophet sallallahu characteristic, which is him being the most optimistic person that you can ever think of. Optimism is a, such a beautiful character, such a beautiful quality if you have it. It's a quality that turn everything around and make you always feel empowered and strong. I know we're living in a time, as I said, tough time, hard time, politically, economically, uh, 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 in so many areas, there's people can complain and point out here and there so many problems in individual level, community level, nation level, worldly level, you name it. But still, that sense of optimism should always grow strong as the problems grow strong as well. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sharia of Islam, the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, basically teach us to have that sense of optimism in our life. For instance, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he sees or he hears a negative name, give a negative connotation, give, make people down, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately will change it. For instance, he asked the person, where you came from? He said, I came from a valley known as the valley of al-dalala, shi'b al-dalala. It is the valley of guidance. Which land do you live? He said, I live in a land known as the dusty land. It is basically, it is the green land. Yeah, what's your daughter's name? Sinner. He said, no, she is Jamila. Even when he moved to Medina, you know, the Prophet ﷺ city was known in the history as Yathrib. Yathrib has a negative connotation. It means decreasing, something decrease, something take away something from you. So the Prophet ﷺ said, no one allowed to call the city anymore Yathrib. Because it have a negative meaning basically connected to the word. And he called it Tayba, the good city. The city which is known today as Tayba, al Madinatul Munawwara. The Prophet ﷺ city became a city known as a city of light. That sense of optimism, even when he saw a man is named Harb, war, he said, no, your silm, your peace. And Nabi ﷺ, I can go on and on in hundreds of examples. When he sees something sounds negative, he will change it to make it positive, to give that sense of optimism. Not only that, even in the most difficult times, he installed the sense of optimism in the heart of his companions. When he left Mecca sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alone with his companion Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda. In that difficult moment, can you imagine you leaving your, your home, you did not know what's the future carrying for you, uh, uh, from a human being perspective. So in, in this point, Suraqah ibn Malik, he, hunted, he was 
uh, searching for the Prophet وسلم, and he found the Prophet وسلم, in, the, in his way to Medina. In that moment, look at the Prophet وسلم, telling Suraqah ibn Malik that one day will come and you will be carrying the bracelets of Kisra uh, 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 and put it and you will have it. The bracelets that Yus Kisra used to have, which is the king of the Persian Empire. In the time of Al Khandaq, where the Sahaba radiallahu anhu mardahum see that they're surrounded with the enemy from every direction, and only few of them left, with the whole entire Arabia gathered to uh, 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 kill the Prophet ﷺ and to destroy his city and uh, his state. At that moment, the Prophet ﷺ told the companions that my religion, my basically ummah, will reach to the farthest per point east and west. In the moment of difficulty, and Nabi Wasallam made sure that they have that sense of trust and optimism, because that's the fuel that keep us always going. The moment you give up hope, the moment you can't survive, you can survive. And Nabi Wasallam shows us in his sharia another concept of, uh, uh, in, in our deen that install the concept of optimism. For instance, the Prophet Wasallam said, Whenever you make dua, whenever you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at the language that you use. Look at the verb that you use. It's a command. Oh Allah, forgive me. And you nobody give a command to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are so certain about what you're asking. That's why you're not even allowed to say, if you wish. لا يقول أحدكم اللهم اغفر لي إن شئت. You're not allowed to say, oh Allah, forgive me if you wish. No, you should be certain about what you're requesting. That sense of optimism, that sense of optimism when you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you pray to your Lord, is something so unique, so much needed today in our time, in our life. But, sin, but optimism, it doesn't just happen like that. I wish it does. There is nothing like after this khutbah, going to say, oh, I heard the khutbah about optimism, let me push the bottom of optimism. And I'm going to walk out of this khutbah, an optimistic person. It doesn't work like that. Anything that you want to adopt, any character you want to develop in you, in most of the cases, is something you have to achieve, you have to work on it. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ بِالتَّصَبُّرُ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمُ مَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ وَقَبْلَهَا قَالْ وَإِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمُ He said, learning, knowledge, is will happen, is will, ha- will happen to you, you will have knowledge if you start seeking knowledge. Everybody knows knowledge has to be acquired. You don't born, you, nobody, of, no one of us born knowledgeable person. All of us came out of our mother wombs, as Allah said, knows nothing. Then we acquired knowledge. Then the Nabi Wasallam followed that with a unique point. He said, and also patience. It's not going to happen like that. It's by seeking that character. And also being, uh, 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 have the ability to be patient. It's something you need to seek, you need to practice. Forbearing. Something that you need to practice. In another word, that you acquire that. So even the akhlaq, the character, something that you need to develop, you need to work on. And the same thing with optimism. It is something that you need to work on. You need to change. You need to adapt that character and to work on it. And I would like to share with you a few points. It will help you. It might something you take away today to home and to think about and to start to work on it. What can make you an optimistic person? A person who always see opportunities in his or her difficulties. Versus the pessimist people who always see difficulties in their opportunities. When there is an opportunity, they always come with these all kind of difficulties that this can wrong, this can go bad. This is a pessimist person. That's not how the Prophet ﷺ used to be. The Prophet ﷺ was the most optimistic person you can think of. Thinking always of opportunities that he can have during the difficulties of time. So number one, the, strong, the, the correct understanding of the concept of Al-Qadr. The concept of predestiny. It is one of the beliefs, the article of faith for all of us as Muslims. To understand the concept of what is known as Al-Qadr, the predestiny. 
When you study that, when you understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for first point related to this, it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good and the source of all good. In Allah azza wa jal, biyadihi al-khayr kulluh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ilayhi al-khayr kulluh, wa minhu al-khayr kulluh, wa al-sharru laysa ilayk, rabbana tabarakta wa ta'alayt. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, will never ever decree upon you something that it is evil or the, the evil in it outcome the good. That's part of our belief as Muslim. Nothing Allah will decree upon anyone something that the wrong or the evil or the bad of it will outcome the good. That's a simple belief uh, that every Muslim should have. That we always trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He decreed upon us, always the good outcome the bad. Not necessarily according to your timeline, but according to His timeline. Not according to your limit knowledge of the consequences of the actions, but according to His knowledge and seeing the big picture. Seeing that His creations in general, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that. And that's something make you very... Uh, 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 trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever He decreed upon you. And you know there is always coming well, come out of it, will come out of it. You know, there is a, a king was once traveling with his best friend. His best friend is known, of a, uh, is known with this, a word that's very common. He always say alhamdulillah. So whatever happened, he always say alhamdulillah. So when the king was uh, traveling for hunting trip, and he cut the tip of his finger. So the blood start gushing, and the friends of the king said, Alhamdulillah. The king got mad. Why would you say Alhamdulillah for that? I just cut the tip of my finger. I'm going to be able to use the arrows and bow. You know, it's going to ruin my trip. And he was so mad at him, and he start, he ordered the soldiers to take him away. When he was leaving, he said, Alhamdulillah. And even if I lost this friendship, Alhamdulillah. The king became more furious and angry and promised that when he go back to the land, he will punish him severely. Next day, the king go on his hunting trip. And he uh, basically has a very strong horse and he got uh, uh, separated from his uh, uh, guard and ended up in his enemy's land who they took him and they said that this is sacred land. And anyone walking to the sacred land must be killed and executed and basically sacrificed to their god. They laid him down in that big, shiny, uh, 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 spotless uh, marble slab to sacrifice him to their God. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. That the priest of that group said that this person cannot be killed, cannot be sacrificed. He's a bad luck for a nation if we do so. Because he's missing the tip of his finger. And for our God, it has to be a complete body. And they just let him go because of that finger that he injured or the tip finger that he cut it off. The whole entire way back, he kept saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He got his friend out of, basically where he locked him up, and he said, there must be something good happened to you too. Because he said, Alhamdulillah. He said, great king, the only one has a horse like yours is me. If I was with you today, early in the morning, we will end up both of us in that line. And they will let you go because of your, the tip of your finger is missing. And I will be the one who will be sacrificed to their gods. So alhamdulillah that you locked me up. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Wasn't for nothing that the first verse, the first verse in the Quran is, Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. It's to build that sense of optimism. I'm always grateful and thankful to Allah for whatever happened. I always say, I praise you, my Lord. Because I know you. I know your nature as a just, fair, loving God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also part of understanding of Al-Qadr, that we know that in order for you to achieve something, you have to take the necessary means. That's in itself, that's in itself, give you that sense of optimism that I work and I will get my basically uh, the result that I want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things not going to happen by itself. You're never ever going to leave as they say. You're never ever going to be able to leave a footprint in the beach if you sit in your bottom. You have to walk in order for you to leave these footprints. 
And you put effort, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for it. Part of our belief in Al-Qadr, that we know Allah does not force anyone to anything. You came to this masjid by your choice. And if you don't, if you want to stay home, it will be your choice as well. It's your choice. Imagine if we believe that we have no choice. What sense of optimism anyone can have? That's why part of our belief in Al-Qadr, that Allah gives you the ability to make the choice, the ability to make the choice, the, cho- the choices in your life. I might not control the wind when I sail on the, in the sea, but I always can adjust my sailing to, to reach a new destination. I always have the ability to do that. So that's number one. The, st- the correct understanding of the concept of Al-Qadr, increase and knowledge in this area, increase your sense of optimism and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, which is very ironic, very unique, and a lot of people underestimated it. It is the, basically the look, the way you carry yourself, the way you carry yourself, your style, the way you dress, the way you smell, the way you basically uh, care for your appearance means a lot of building a sense of optimism. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw a man, he's completely white hair in his head and his beard and missy. And Nabi ﷺ said, why don't you change your white hair, your gray hair? Change the color of your gray hair. Don't look too uh, old like that. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, if you grow hair, take care of it. Why you think we are highly recommended? Some ulama even seem, seem to see it is can be near obligatory to take a shower before you come to Jumu'ah prayer. You have to clean yourself. You have to remove the hair, the, basically like the underarm hair and other areas. Why you need to, to trim your, your nails so you don't look like animals. You look clean, you look sharp. Why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi loved perfumes. And, and, and he made it so obvious that something beautiful to have. All this for what? To build that character. Because the way you, you look sharp, you look clean, you look uh, 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 good, it impacts your psychology. Every single research today says that our physiology impacts our psychology. The way you carry yourself means a lot. Means a lot to you. I live in the United States of America. When I study the history of America, you know when they brought the slaves from Africa, they were not slaves in their country. They were enslaved in, in Europe and enslaved in, in America. You know what the thing that they used to do? They ordered them not allowed to take a shower for months. Why? So they can smell like animal. So they can look like animal. So you, they behave like animals. They want to break their spirits. Not allowed to wear proper clothes. And Nabi Sallallahu in Jumu'ah wear special clothes. In Eid, special clothes. His clothes always looks nice. It's not about being rich at all or have a lot of money. It's about you care for yourself. For, for yourself. Also, number three. One of the things that bring a lot of sense of optimism to you, to make an optimistic person, to learn how to smile. Smiling is such a beautiful thing. It doesn't make only people around you feel good. It makes you yourself feel good. Smiling is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And I'll tell you the truth. That it is so sad that we as a Muslims all over the globe, all over the globe, I travel from the farthest east to the farthest west. Unfortunately, it is something missing among Muslim community. When you go to the masjids, people just give you that straight look. You know, that I don't know what is the deal with that. You know, we always been the ummah of a smile. Why we lost that? Why when we talk about smiling, we think of other nations other than Muslims? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jabir said, I never met the Prophet I never met the Prophet Not a single time in my life. He said, I never met the Prophet unless he's smiling. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, inside the house, he used to smile more than outside the house. Radiallahu anha wa arda. And plenty of companions, so many of them, said the same thing about the Prophet ﷺ. Smiley face, yes face, welcoming face. And so many of us, unfortunately, lost their smiles. But the good news, that your smile didn't go anywhere. It just right, right under your nose. So smile. This is the sunnah of your Prophet ﷺ. Your smile at your brothers, it is a form of charity. Instead, when you see someone you don't know, don't just give him that look. 
checking him out? No, give him that nice smile. Welcome him. Say salamu alaikum to him. Greet the person. It is something will fill your heart with sense of optimism and try it and see how this will work. Number three. It's this part of your body. It's your heart. يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ خَيْرًا يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees goodness in your heart, He will give you good. You know what? This heart needs to be cleansed. If you want to be an optimistic person, don't fill your heart with hate. Fill it with love. Don't fill your heart with jealousy and anger and, and, and anger at others. Fill it for wishing good for others. You know, forgiveness. Move on in your life. You know, this when you fill your heart with these good, great, positive meanings, you can grow. You can change yourself. But if, you're, if you always feel that your success will always by destroying others, there's no point of, there is, it's very hard for me to see someone like that will be an, opt, an optimistic person. And instead of saying that, say, may Allah give me and them success. That's envy, jealous, hate, anger. Take it out of your heart. And replace it with something good because your heart is a container. Whatever you filled it up with, it will be filled up with that thing. If you fill it up with anger and hate and negativity, there is no space to fill it up with positive manners and positive way of feeling and thinking. And if this one said, that leads you to something else, which is number five, don't be a negative person. Negativity is such a bad attitude, a bad character. Everything you see it in a negative way. Everything you look at, only the bad talk, the bad things. You don't think of the positive of the talk that you hear. You don't think about the positive that maybe your family have. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't like some in your wife in the hadith of Muslim, قَالَ لَا يَكَرْهُ مُؤْمِنٌ مُؤْمِنًا فِي رِوَى لَا يَفْرَكُ مُؤْمِنٌ مُؤْمِنًا Don't hate your spouse because of the quality that you see in her or in him. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, instead, think about the positive, the positive thing that they have. One of the most common hadith that we're all familiar with, that we're all familiar with, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there is people were in a cave. In a cave. And the cave was blocked with a big, huge rock. And this rock, every one of the three people who inside that cave, ask Allah with one of their best deeds. But one of them asked Allah by something very interesting. He said, I had a, cousin, a female cousin who I loved so much and I desired so much. And I tried to seduce her so many times to refuse. And one day she asked for money. And I told her, I will give it to you, but you give me yourself. And he said, when I was so near to do the haram, she told me, if you badly want me like that, marry me. And I let her go and I gave her the money. Ya Rabb, I only let her go for your sake. The question is, when the Prophet ﷺ told us the story, he focused in which part of the story? The negative part, how evil he is, taking advantage of her, or he focused on the positive part, that how he let her go, how he's a good person. When the Sahaba saw a drunk person, they said, some of them said, he's always drunk. He's always brought to the Prophet ﷺ's master drunk. Allah, may Allah curse him. They curse him. The Prophet ﷺ said, no. Don't, don't help the shaitan over your brother. إِنَّهُ يُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ He loves Allah and His Messenger. He looked at the positive in the person. Invest in the positive thing. The Prophet ﷺ said about the society of Mecca, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِيُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ There is good in Mecca. There is good in the people. There is good in the nation. And I came to complete that goodness. Whoever says... People are all bad, he is the worst. That's what our Prophet ﷺ said. Also, watch your words. Words has a unique magic impact, magical impact. The word that you use, use always good words. The Prophet ﷺ, when he traveled, he liked to hear words like Nasr, Salim, victory, safety. He will always say these positive words. The Prophet never look at his sunnah, his seer. You don't see the Prophet saying all these negative words, bad words, curse words. No. He always have these beautiful words comes out of inspiring people around you. Watch your words. Because words 
is basically what represent your character. And also, brothers and sisters, you might say to me, Oh, Sheikh, you live good life, not, not some, maybe me. Some of you might think that way. Oh, maybe you don't have the problem I have. I have a problem. I have a health problem. I have a family member who is dying, and I have no money to support him or her. You know, I have a fa- I'm about to get divorced. You know, I love someone that I'm not able to get married to. You know, I have a bad habit. I have a teenager who's giving me a hard time. I'm losing my family. I'm losing my job. I'm living a very hard life. I'm living under the, I'm, I'm poor. I'm in debt. I'm this, I'm that. And you know what? I can count so many problems me and you have. You and me have. We can go over so many problems. And I know there are so many problems out there. Don't think ever. Optimistic person, the optimistic person, a person who's a realistic. Optimism never meant that you don't be a realistic. And in reality, I know that there are so many problems out there. But I'll tell you something. I'm also 100% sure that there are so many solutions out there. Not only the problems out there, there is the solutions out there. ما أنزل الله من داء إلا جعل له دواء. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. There is no disease ever exists unless there is a cure for it. قال ابن القيم رحمه الله. And these diseases are not limited to the physical diseases. It's all kind of disease, all kind of bad things. There is solutions for it. There is antidote for it. There's something to fix it. It's about you to research. So that's being realistic. You know what? It's okay for the problems to pass by your thoughts. But it's not okay to settle in your heart. It's okay to think about your problems. But it's not okay to be led by your problems. There is a huge difference between the two attitudes. So many of us live very long life without discovering the talents and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given to you. Once a teacher of mine, when I was very young in age, he took me in his car and he said, Walid, I want to take you to the place in our city where it has more potential than any other place in our city. It has potentials to make billions of dollars. It has a potential to change the world. It has a potential to cure so many diseases and to solve so many problems. So I was thinking, where are we going to go? University, or research centers, or I don't know, big companies, a news outlet, what, what is it? It's going to be the most resourceful place in our city. And he took me to the cemetery. And it's like, cemetery? What potential people have in the cemetery? He said, inside these graves, there is ideas worth billions of dollars. In these graves, there are so many talents and potentials beyond your imagination. But what happened to it? It was buried with the people who had these talents and ideas and, and potentials. They never utilized it. They never used it. He said, don't ever let your talents and your potential to be buried with you. Make sure that you exercise it before you go to your grave. These talents and these potentials and these abilities that Allah have given you, these potentials that Allah said to the angels, إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know about human beings what you don't know. The abilities that Allah have given you as a human being beyond your imaginations. But the problem is we never discover it. We never utilize it. And it's never been too late. So many of us blessed with so many things, but unfortunately, we don't feel the trust and the self-esteem to use it. These are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. What you do with it is your gift back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, brothers and sisters, uh, optimism, it is a very contagious thing. If you hang with, out with people who are optimistic, you will become an optimistic person. You hang out with people who are pessimist, every time you guys gather, oh, this is never going to change. Oh, this is never going to happen. Oh, this is not going to... You know, these list of words of negativities, if this is how your spouse is, how your father is, how your children is, how your friends is, how your boss is, how your co-workers are, how the khatib, your, 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 your leaders are, there's not much 
Help. I mean, it's, it's very hard for me. Or they said, no much help. That's, that's, there's no sense of optimism. Hang on. Hang around people who have that sense of optimism. Yes, it is possible. Yes, we will do our best. Yes, I will try. Yes, I will commit myself. Yes, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me. When you have this kind of people around you, your sense of optimism will grow. And finally, the whole concept of optimism is based in a very Islamic fundamental in our aqidah. It's a very deep principles in Islam. It's called Husnul Dhanni Billah. It's called Husnul Dhanni Billah, which it means to always expect good from Allah. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى أنا عند حسن ظني عبدي بي فليظن بي عبدي ما شاء I will be always meeting my servant's expectation. You expect good from me, that's what you're going to get. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised if you walk to him, he will run to you. So that's how it is in the end of the day. So remember, to watch your words, to watch your smile, to watch your style, the way you carry yourself, you always remember to uh, uh, basically train yourself and to learn about the concept of Al-Qadr, that everything upon you is something good. Make sure that you hang around people who are optimistic. Make sure that you get rid of all, cleanse your heart and fill it with goodness. Make sure that you don't be negative, always be positive uh, in your words, your attitude. And remember that it's all based on the concept of husn al billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who live with that uh, character and uh, uh, help us to have it.